Many sim racers know this situation. You're playing your favorite game for a couple of months now, but you're no longer improving as rapidly as you did in the beginning. It's like you hit a wall. <laughs> Seems like you've developed some bad habits over there. But hey, don't worry too much. Today we have a look at the five biggest mistakes advanced sim racers do and how to fix them. And with that, welcome back to Overtake.gg. My name is Champion Joe and today it's finally time to follow up on my 5 beginner mistakes video I did in April. If you haven't checked that one out yet, you can find it in the top right. And I urge you to do so because there are some essential tips in this video that are 100% the groundwork for what we are up to today. So let's jump right in and have a look at mistake number 1. Having a flawed braking technique. Braking is the single most important part when racing, as it will determine how quickly you can enter a corner and how much speed you can carry through it. In our last video, with 5 beginner tips, one important point was not to brake too late. Many beginners get it wrong and think that the later you brake, the faster you go, but that is a fallacy. Braking super late into a corner will lead to the car not wanting to rotate in the speed you wanted to turn in. In plain language, this means that you either miss the turn completely or have to reckon with a lot of under or oversteer. Therefore, it makes sense to brake earlier and in a straight line so that cornering is as smooth as possible. This guarantees a clean exit from the corner and overall faster lap times. And although this is also true for intermediate sim racers, we can no longer just focus on a stable corner entry. We also have to get a bit closer to where the maximum of grip lies. Which is why trail braking is an absolute must learn technique for all sim racers out there that will drastically impact your lap times. What this means is that we no longer strictly separate braking and steering from each other. Quite the opposite. So we try to combine the two to get through a turn faster and safer. Basically what we're trying to do while trail braking is to brake sharply into a turn and as soon as we start to turn in we gradually release the brake pedal. This is so effective because when braking the weight of the car is shifted forward to the front axle. So when we are on the brakes the front tires have then more grip and could potentially turn in faster and safer if we weren't braking of course. So releasing the brakes gradually will guarantee the most amount of grip possible that will allow us to brake later in the long run. Which is 90% of the time the whole reason why others can brake so much later than you. They just know how to brake into a turn instead of just braking for a turn. Good tracks to practice this are Spa and Monza. Both are a lot of fun and feature a couple of hard braking zones each of which are good spots to perfect this technique. Which brings us to mistake number two and this is for all the sim racers out there that seem to have hit a wall in their development. The cornering speed, a huge issue intermediate sim racers have is not paying attention to the amount of speed they carry into fast flowing corners. The most time on track is going to be gained on the brakes because if we brake late or not as heavy we carry more speed. And each meter you drive with a higher speed than your opponent will lead to better lap times and really good overtaking opportunities in the long run. One of the best examples you can find for this is the fast flowing GT chicane from the Nürburgring GP in ACC. This turn is the opposite of the hard braking zone of Monza's T1 for example. You need to carry a lot of speed if you don't want to fall back in the order. Sure. Braking early or hard for this turn will guarantee you to go safe and controlled through there, but it will cost you your precious time. Try and focus on those nuances and carry as much speed as you can through each turn. What can help you with that is to put yourself under artificial pressure. Imagine that the cornering is a kind of mini game where you have to get back on the gas as fast as you can. You have to keep the refs and the speed as high as possible or your car will explode for example. This can help you keep your attention span high and force you to take a little more risk into each turn. Just don't overdo it, balance is as always the key factor. And if you're playing AC or iRacing, consider trying to do a few races with the Mazda MX-5 Cup, which is the best possible car to learn this. If you want to be quick with this type of race car, cornering speed is 
everything as the engine does not produce a lot of power and getting back up to speed needs a lot of time. If you can race the MX-5 hard, you are ready to race everything hard, trust me. Tip number three involves a lot of work, but it will pay off in the long run. And maybe even though it's something you initially didn't want to learn, I think everybody should have a basic knowledge of setups. Of course, the whole setup issue is ultra complex and every change to the setup affects the whole balance of the car, making a perfect result almost impossible. But we are not searching for perfection here, but rather for a helping hand or slight advantage. A good example again is driving in Spa in a GT3 car and this is your point of view in the second half of the track. Jesus, yeah, loads of understeer. And yeah, you could definitely blame the car and pick another one, but what's really happening is that you are too lazy to put some work into the setup. And you don't have to be a crack for this. Explaining in depth what each part of the setup does to the balance of your car would really be beyond scope here. But if your car is understeering like crazy in medium speed corners, you need to soften the front anti roll bar to let the car roll more freely through the turns. And this is only one of many examples where some basic setup knowledge will make your overall experience with sim racing much more pleasant. So take your time and learn some basic tips about setups. Watch a YouTube video or have a look at the incredible table from Driver61 I have linked you in the video description. Maybe I should do a video series on it. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments down below. But have a look at it. I guarantee you it will help you big time. Mistake number 4 is a common one that especially super fast record breaking drivers suffer from. They only know one single racing line. Oh my god. I bet you know those guys, sure. It's correct that there is an ideal line on every racetrack out there and that will lead to the best possible lap time in qualifying if you learn it by heart. But as soon as other cars get involved, that ideal line won't be available to you all of the time. Which leads to many super quick drivers crashing out as soon as they have to defend or attack another car. Which is why you should learn some alternative racing lines. But how do you do that? Easy, just load up your desired track and training session and force yourself into positions on track you would aim at if another car would be alongside you. Where would you need to brake to take the next turn completely on the inside? How much speed can you carry through a fast corner if you can't let the car get pushed out to the outside of it? Ask yourself those questions and try and experience the racetrack outside of the ideal line and you will see that you will be more prepared for the race action that's to come. And the last tip for the day, choose your battles wisely. What I see super often in online races are drivers who want to make everything happen in turn 1 and I don't get it. They want to win the race at the first chance they get with 30 minutes still left to go. And I also include in this category all of those who have no patience whatsoever in a duel. How can it be that a small gap in the inside must immediately be seen and used as an attack point whereby contact cannot be avoided when approaching this gap? Especially advanced racers should be aware that an attack on track can only be done if it can be done without any contact. Instead of steering into a small gap just because it's there for a split second, it's better to anticipate the opponent's next moves. Find out where the best attack points on track are. Where can you go side by side into a braking zone? Where do you gain the most time on your opponent? Where do you have to place the car so you will have the better exit than your rival? Think about all these questions and attack when the right moment arises. Instead of going for a dive bomb, when your opponent does a mini mistake. Because it's like I said in the beginner tips video, it's not all about winning the race. It's about having fun on track and having fair battles with your opponents. So set a good example. What tips would you give to an advanced sim racer? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you liked the video, don't forget to leave a like and hit the subscribe button for more tutorials like this one. But that's already everything from me today. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you next time around. Cheers.